I'm calling the meeting to order for the Monuments and Ceremonies Commission uh, regularly scheduled meeting of May 10th. Yeah. Calling the meeting to order at 336. Uh, we obviously are short of a quorum, so we will not be reviewing the minutes for the April meeting. And we will go right to the chairman's report. First item on my list, uh, we have with us today Al Miller, who's the chairperson for the Darien 2020 Bicentennial. Um, and he ha we're pleased to say that Al has announced that the additional Darien Heritage Trail markers are almost ready to go in. So uh, tentatively, June 10th and June 11th, for the Neroten River Cemetery marker. Um, we will get that data in the newspaper beforehand, but tentatively June 10th, 11th, would, would, would we assume around midday? Uh, yeah, 10th or 11th. Um, it'll be in the papers and everything. Okay. And all those four will be done. Okay. The additional markers that will be going in roughly the same day will be the Tilly Pond Park marker the Rings End Landing marker, the Battle of the Post Road, which was fought where yeah. Hindley Elementary School currently exists, and those will be the four newer markers coming in. Anything else we want to add to that? Uh, no, I hope everybody can uh, come to the ribbon cuttings mm. on June 10th okay. All right, next uh, in my report, uh, I, I failed to put this in as a separate item on the uh, agenda. Uh, Flag Day is coming up, oh, June, June 14th. 14th. That's a Tuesday. So our ceremony will be held here at Town Hall uh, at 5 o'clock in the Veterans Circle in front of Town Hall. We. Uh, that is the same day as our next scheduled meeting. Um, so what do you think? Should we push it up to 4.30? Since we're going to be Just here at 3.30? Right yes. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. let's make it, it'll be at 4.30 in front of Town Hall. That's Tuesday, June 14th, Flag Day. The f June 10th, did you say? 14th. Oh, June, I was going to say. Yeah, because June t is in the wrong thing, as usual. Okay. So 4.30, so that we're not sitting around twiddling our thumbs for forever. I'll let the VFW know about the timing. May have to borrow another flag since I returned the town flag about oh, two weeks ago. Uh, that's all I have on my chairman's report right now. So moving forward to Memorial Day Parade. Um, I'm happy to announce that uh, our Grand Marshal John Walcott, United States Army Captain, uh, served in uh, Fort Carson, Colorado for a year before being shipped over to Pleiku in the Central Highlands of Vietnam, where he spent, as he says, 365 and one half day. <laughs> and uh, he, he was awarded a Bronze Star for his actions in Vietnam. So uh, John has also been the treasurer and on the board of the Middlesex Club and of um, at the Darien Country Club. And he uh, is the past president of the Darien Men's Association and has recently been elected to the town's board of finance. He and his wife, Kathy, have lived here for over 50 years. And uh, he was transferred here temporarily uh, from his home base in San Francisco for his job. Funny how that temporary turns into permanent, well, isn't it? Well, <laughs> no, they actually, they wanted him to go back. Oh. But after having spent quite a few years here, 
he and his wife Kathy demurred, saying that Darien's the place we want to raise our children and their golden lamp. So they chose to stay in Darien, so he switched his career path and went into uh, private wealth management practice rather than leave Darien and go back to San Francisco. So we're delighted that John will be our Grand Marshal. Uh, his wife will be driving him at the head of the parade. Behind and, every good man. Right. And uh, I'm also pleased to announce that our keynote speaker is Lucy Berry, oh. who, uh, yeah, Lucy is a longtime U.S. history teacher at Middlesex Middle School. You have Lucy West here. It's Lucy, uh, it is Lucy West, now she got married recently. But it's, oh. it's Lucy Berry is how she's known, so that's in town. So she's going to, for, yes, her, her official name now is West, she got remarried. Okay. But everybody in town knows her as Lucy Berry, so that's how we're announcing okay. her. Uh, and sadly, Lucy just lost her mom. She's down in South Carolina now making funeral arrangements. That's why she's not here today. Um, but Lucy, in addition to being the stalwart at, uh, in the history department at Middlesex, she is the one who initiated the Darien wartime, uh, uh, wartime veteran street sign program. That's, that's her baby. She's the one who put it all together. So uh, I am, I'm delighted that, that Lucy will be our keynote speaker. And uh, other than that, the, I've gotten most of the usual suspects have confirmed that they're marching. Okay. Uh, the, the one plea that I make every year, uh, and this is especially, especially, I don't want to say it's aimed at, but it applies especially to the brownies and the daisies, that their leaders must be there before 9 a.m. because the moms understandably do not want to leave their children if there's no leader. And what happens is the moms end up parking in the no parking zone creating traffic mayhem. So I plead with every organization, especially those who have young children, make sure your leaders are there before 9 a.m. Uh, but other than that, all of our ducks seem to be in a row. The only one that's out there I have not heard back yet from the National Guard. <clears throat> Traditionally, they supply a marching unit and sometimes some mechanized vehicles. Uh, but with everything going on with COVID, uh, they're, they're leaving their options open because they may actually get called into service. So I have not heard back from the National Guard yet. When do the volunteers have to be there? The volunteers who are working need to be there by 8.30. Okay. Do we, did, did I sign up for that? I think I did. Yes, you did. And if you didn't, we signed you up, so don't okay. you worry. So 8.30 <laughs> on the day. Yes. Because I know last year we went the day before to set stuff up. Did, yes, are we still that, doing that? That will happen again the day before. We... I may well be out of town. It's not 100% sure, but it looks like we shall irritate me. But All right, well, we'll send you the bill for your replacement. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's going to be on Monday the 30th, right? The parade is Monday the 30th. Okay. So we do the setup uh, the Sunday evening beforehand. What time do we have to be there for that? Uh, typically, we like to do it after the after the shopping center quiets down. So about six thirty is usually a good time. Okay, because I know we had bad weather last year. Yeah. And uh, refresh me, Sue Ann, because you're the one who's done this. Did did we do the bunting the night before or the morning? We did it the morning of. They usually do it the morning of. Yeah. Um, Are I you think good I, with that again this year? I don't know. I think last year we did it. We tried to do it the night before, but it was so rainy and windy we, just, we didn't do it. And that's right. We it till the next morning, <laughs> and I, I couldn't come the next morning. We always did the bunting in the morning, just because. And I think just to not have it get messed with yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So eight thirty, okay. And I actually may be possibly away as well for unreserved duty. Isabel will be here. That's okay. TBD. Uh, 
anything else? Any other questions on Memorial Day? Oh, uh, for our audience out there, in addition to the parade, we always like to remind our audience that at the, at the, at the conclusion of the parade, we have the dedication ceremony in the Veterans Cemetery, at Spring Grove Veterans Cemetery. Um, the, that ceremony begins at parade's end, which is typically sometime around 11.20 in the morning. Uh, the library, Darien Library, has graciously uh, agreed to not only provide the cable and the wireless access so that we can broadcast the parade live over YouTube, uh, and Channel 79 will do the uh, ceremony in the Veterans Cemetery. In addition, the library have, uh, uh, has graciously agreed, to, even though the library is officially closed that day, Kira Parrott, who is the, the head of the library, has agreed that she will make the uh, community room available should there be inclement weather so that we can hold the ceremony indoors if needs be. We've only had to do that one year. But, uh, and for those people who ask every year, what happens if it's raining? Are we having the parade? Absolutely. And I answer the same way every year. The troops in the trenches don't get to go home if it's raining. Red, white, and blue um, <laughs> uh, umbrellas all around. Right. <laughs> and again, I would ask those who uh, have a desire to toss candies or streamers or silly string at the parade, please refrain from doing so as it creates a safety hazard. My kids loved that part of the parade. They thought that so, was the best part. <laughs> yeah, but then you get kids running around and that's, that's how true. people get broken legs. That's true. So, uh, I think that's it on Memorial Day. Have we made contact with the scouts to put out the flags? Uh, I have not spoken to them about the flags, thank you. And I've talked to the Girl Scouts about picking them up. We don't have a date, but they know they're doing that. So. Uh, you know, there, there was only one year we had an issue, and that issue caused us to then be a gnat for the state of letting us know uh, but after that one issue, the state has actually been very good about getting the flags down here in time for them to be put out. But I, I will get a hold of the scouts again. Okay. 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 Um, who do I speak to um, up in the Girl Scouts about whichever year it is for the Pledge of Allegiance or, or, or the Gettysburg Address? Is that you? Are you the one that I um, remind? I, I can find it. Usually the Girl Scouts uh, read the Gettysburg Address and the Boy Scouts uh, present General Logan's order. I thought they flipped between the Gettysburg and the Pledge of Allegiance each year, no? Mm -hmm. no? no not in my memory, not okay. in recent memory. Right. Yeah, the girls have done that. And, and the Pledge of Allegiance, that was always, you know, maybe I, we decided each Maybe year that's a little the one different that pledge of allegiance usually the grand marshal would lead that okay i'll go back and i should look at the program oh we can look at the program that's true <laughs> that's a good point okay um anything else on memorial day okay so. next um the, the official title of the program is the wall that heals. What it is, it's a, it's a two-thirds scale version of the Vietnam Wall in Washington, D.C. that travels around the country. And uh, it's entitled The Wall That Heals uh, to help those family members uh, and friends who lost someone to heal. Uh, it will be in Norwalk this year from June 2nd through June 5th. And um, the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th 
uh, from 8.30 uh, till 5 o'clock, there will be, the focus will be for school groups and, uh, and, and other organizations like the Girl Scouts or the Daisies or the Boy Scouts that will come in groups. So for individual citizens who may choose to wander over to check it out, you might want to hold off till 5 o'clock in the evening if you're going to go on the second, third, or, or uh, the second, third. Um, on Saturday the 4th at 1 p.m. there will be the official ceremony. And at that ceremony, uh, the names of all 157 Fairfield County residents who died in Vietnam will be read aloud. 157? Right, from Fairfield County, will be read aloud um, town by town. So each town uh, has the opportunity to select a person to read the names for that town. And uh, first selectman Monica McNally has graciously agreed that uh, to give me the directive to do my best to find first children of those who died, secondly, uh, brothers and sisters and other relatives who may be alive. So I've been doing my due diligence and I've actually found some children. Uh, the children I've found thus far are not able to, or are not physically able to be here that day. One of them, though, who was completely unaware that we read the names every year yeah. here in Darien, uh, she absolutely is going to make it a point to be here for Memorial Day in a coming year. And at that point, I think we'll ask her instead of the first selectman to read the names for Vietnam at least. Um, I, I still have a few more people to track down, which uh, I'll tell you something, it's sort of interesting. We all fall victim to this that sadly, at times, they're just names on the plaque. And having done the research through the great help of Jeff DeWitt from Norwalk, who is the chair for running the Wall That Heals program, we put together uh, full biographical sketches of those who died from, from Darien. And it's, it's very humbling to read about these guys. Uh, one of the guys, and I'm not going to give the names now because I'm not reading, yeah. uh, was one of the first uh, Special Forces casualties. He was a this was his fifth tour of duty. Mm. He enlisted when he turned 18 in 1946. Wow. Uh, served till, till 49. Uh, discharged, and 28 seconds later, the Korean War started. He re enlisted, did a three year itch in Korea, got married in Korea uh, to a Japanese national. At the end of the Korean War, discharged again re-upped again when things started to cook in Vietnam and um, uh, you know we've got a couple of guys Silver Star, Oak Clusters, I mean some of these guys were uh, you know they were they Heroes. were all in and yeah. it's, it's very humbling to, to read about these guys so uh, that will become part of our official dossier at some point and we're going to have to figure out something we, we may want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and this may be a good project for the Girl Scouts going forward about yeah. doing interviews of, of those veterans like Jim Long, Vietnam vet, right. who, you know, to get their story and compile stories. Um, you know, we are a storytelling species. And I mean, that's what this commission does, right? And it might be a, a great thing also for them to be talking to the uh, returning vets yeah, or more from, from vets. all the other conflicts mm -hmm. as well. And, and from the Cold War. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of great stories. 
So uh, that's the wall that heals. It will be there through Sunday, uh, June 5th. It will close at 1 o'clock on Sunday, June 5th. Next, and I, did I, yes, I did pull it out. Uh, any questions on, on the wall that heals? What time is the ceremony on? 1 o'clock on Saturday, June 4th. And, um, and that's at Veterans Park. A, a Veterans Memorial, Memorial Park in Stanford. And in I Stanford? Will, it's not uh, I'm sorry, Fairfield. <laughs> Norwalk. Norwalk. <laughs> oh. um, I, I will be putting signs up around town that will give people the notice of what's going on. And it is open 24 hours a day, by the way, and it will be lit. So if you're one of those people who works the night shift or can't sleep or got thrown out of the house, <laughs> need some place to go. <laughs> Doghouse unavailable. Lost your keys. Yeah, I, just, I would only say, though, that unfortunately, uh, this sign does not list the, the Saturday ceremony at 1 o'clock. Okay, but you will be seeing this at, at the supermarkets. I, I posted the first one at Mama Carmelo's about an hour ago. Do you have any extra ones that I can take with? No. No. Okay. Take one of these Sharpies, not the top or the bottom. I like that. Good idea. Okay, next. Uh, wartime Veteran Street Sign Program. Uh, I am absolutely delighted to say that this the next the next street sign to go up is not in my official capacity as commissioner but my 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 private opinion as an individual the best one we've done so far this sign will be going up for brothers philip and alan morehouse um, phil morehouse uh, actually started this commission and uh, these two guys both fought in World War II. Allen uh, was one of the first casualties on D-Day. Um, Phil came back to Darien and became really one of the cogs of this town. So the ceremony will be on Sunday, May 29th the day before Memorial Day at 12 noon and the ceremony will take place on the Roten Avenue in front of the Fish Home for Soldiers Memorial, which is the large rock with the bronze plaque located immediately across the street from the Roten Heights Fire Department. So those who are planning on attending, we would ask that you park down below behind the Neroten Heights Fire Department house by the VFW post and down along the uh, Little League fields there uh, because there, there is no parking available on the Roten Avenue itself. So that's at, at noon on Sunday, June 29th. Um, Alan Morehouse, uh, before the war, was a teacher in Darien, and he was 1st Lieutenant Company K, 3rd Battalion, 16th Infantry. He was wounded uh, in North Africa fighting the Africa Corps, but refused to leave the company. He also served in Sicily and was promoted to captain uh, at the head of the 1st Inf Infantry, the Big Red One Division on Omaha Beach. Uh, he chose to fight with the 1st Division because he knew his brother Philip was in that division. He was among the first killed under intense fire early in the morning of June 6th. He received the Purple Heart for his wounds in Tunisia and a Silver Star for gallantry in action. My favorite caller, Scam Langley. Um, his younger brother, Phil, also a lifelong Darien resident, after graduating from UConn, commissioned as a second lieutenant, 
uh, entered the army in July of 40. Uh, he served in the Big Red One from July 40th through July 45. He was eventually promoted to major and received the Bronze Star. He also landed at Normandy, uh, hoping to reunite with his brother, but unfortunately received the sad news that that was not to be. Uh, when he returned to the US, he went to Yukon Law School, uh, practiced law, became Darien's probate judge, um, and uh, he continued serving in the US Reserves, in the US Army Reserves, until he retired in 1961 as a lieutenant colonel. He was a big believer in community service and among many other activities, he served for the First Congregational Church, the Kiwanis Club, as I said, the founder of the Dairy and Monuments and Ceremonies Commission. He was the Al Miller 50 years ago. He was the 150th anniversary of the town of Darien. 52 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he served in the 1st Inter Infantry Division Foundation, the Spring Grove Cemetery Association, <clears throat> what was then the Senior Men's Association, uh, the Darien Housing Authority, the Middlesex Genealogical Society, the Darien Free Library Association, the VFW Post 693, U.S. Sons of the American Revolution, Connecticut so Society of Mayflower Descendants, the American Bar, and the Connecticut Bar Associations. My goodness, I feel so like I do nothing. So it's amazing he had yeah. time to have breakfast. I was so, just going to say that, yeah. Yeah. So again, that ceremony will be on May 29th, 12 noon, in front of the site of the Fitch Home for Soldiers and Sailors on the Roden Avenue, immediately across the street from the Roden Heights Fire Department. And our cemetery committee people are not here today. Uh, all I can say is that uh, Mario's done a great job making that cemetery look good. Almost make you want to move in, but not yeah, now. Not, quite. <laughs> not ready. <laughs> no, I thought he did a great job. I went over and looked at it yeah. the other day. Yeah, yeah which really it, looked, it looks good. Which one? Neroten. I was just there today, yeah, and it does look good. I was really, really happy because we're going to have the ceremony there. Right. Like, yeah, it looks okay. It did look great. And next online is the town hall display case. So Nancy, I sent yesterday an email that says that it went through. I yeah, it just it didn't have pictures. It just had the application. Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't put, uh, you said we didn't need to put the pictures in. Okay, well, and I, you know, so I told them they didn't have to do that. I don't want to keep inundating them with more requests because <laughs> I'm trying okay. to simplify this. So, but when, you got the applications. Good. Yeah, but okay. you know, actually, I couldn't read them because they, the way they were scanned. So, when oh, are they looking sorry. to go in? The first one goes in on. Let me see. Yeah, they were dark. Some of them. Some, were yeah. Dark and I yeah. Nice to see. Okay, the first one will be on June for June next month. So I will be meeting. Do they want to go in earlier? No. Why would they? Uh, just asking. Oh no 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 no. All right. So you know what? Uh, we're going to hang. We're going to meet her. Uh, it's Carol Conzi. We're going to meet her on May thirty first to hang. Is that Fred's wife? Yes, it is Fred's wife. Okay. And. Um, I've got every, I don't have anybody, for, oh, let's see, I do have July, I do have August. She's Carol with an E? Well, I've got her without an E, but okay. I will verify that because I'm not sure. Um, I have, uh, we have July, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, keep in mind, the others after June and July will be provisional, so we're not going to approve anybody after July. Yet. After July or after June? Uh, after July. We'll do June and July to approve. The others will be tentative because we don't want it just to be a, even though for whatever reasons there's been a dearth of applications, if we start getting applications from something other than artists, we're going to weigh what will come in because typically in the fall, a lot of organizations want to come in. Oh, I wish you had told me that. I don't like leading, misleading people, and I feel like I'm misleading them now. 
that it's not, yeah. you know. And how about I think we'll get them in. The question is what month? Yeah, and also maybe half month. Now, can we combine you. artists? Is there any reason they can't be combined? Well, you're only putting two in each cabinet. It, you know, the most you can put is two and, you know. How, because of the size? Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, how big are they? I don't know, but I gave them the dimensions of the cabinet so that they can fit their work to the cabinet space. Okay. So it'll either be one big one or two medium-sized pieces. Okay. So, who's in uh, July? July is Laura Dolcetti. Oh, boy. Do you know her work? Yeah. Her work is fabulous. I mean, both of them, both. They, they're really good Darien people. I mean, the families have been here forever. Yes, 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 yes. And then I have... Um, I used to go to the restaurant. So did I. I wish you were. Very good. Very August good. is Steve Fritch, who's... I know Steve. Yeah, he's very well known. And then um, September is Chet Sauer. Also, she her husband was my son's football coach. Okay. And then October is Jan Raymond. Hmm. And November is Gigi Barrett. And I've put myself in for December as a placeholder. I'm happy so, to put two of my photos uh, in there, but ask, we'll see if we get. Ask any of them uh, if uh, if their work is capable of sharing a space. Mm. And you know, the other option is if it's, I don't know that we can do this with legitimate artists as opposed to school kids. With the school kids, The school has not been responsive. No, but the school kids put it all along the wall Correct. as well. But I don't know that we want to do that with real artwork. Well, this was just supposed to be for the display case. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking outside the box that I don't know that it would. I'm just worried that it gets tricky that for no good reason other than someone just right. drops out of the sky and says, well, that's not fair. Why do they get to right. show their art? I have art. Why can't I show my right. art? So, I, I, wish I, had, I wish I hadn't taken this on. Now all no, these no, objections no, no. are coming I'm up. Not it's not an objection. It's not it's, an objection at all. I, I think that if there had been a wider display or communication of, hey, this a case is open, please make applications. You know what, no, I, I, think, I think we need to talk to the fire marshal again because I'm fairly well convinced the reason that we've not had any applications is it's we used to be backed up, Yeah. but now when everything got there. changed, they moved it over to the side and nobody could see it. It used to be right by the front door. Yeah. And I want it where that town directory sign is and the fire marshal initially said you need X amount of clearance for the doors for fire codes. And I said, well, if we move that town directory sign over, we've got enough room for fire codes. So I'm going to go back and revisit that with, with Bob Bush and, and see if we can get it moved to a place of prominence where people see it. Because right now, it's an orphan where it is. Put the directory at the end of the uh, uh, railing going up, the, you know, that you come in. Where that, that uh, hand sanitizer thing yeah. is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Put it right and there and then you got space. The the case I was talking about if we start putting things on the walls. Oh, yeah. okay. Make it more okay. of like a show. Yeah, I'm just concerned that, I, you know, sticky fingers and oh, uh, yeah. coming to the ends with a Coca-Cola or defacing. I had that notes. happen to me. This yeah. child was drinking hot chocolate and spilt it all over two of my photos. Oh, I was oh, not a happy yeah. camper. I bet. And the mother was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, at least she said that. Yes, at least I got a Sort okay, so what, what since, since they're not coming in until June, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, one of these in there now. Just so we have something in there to, to let know, and I'm going to borrow your Sharpie before well, we Well, we were hoping to get someone from the high school for May yes. or June, and or June, and I, I, or Autumn's not here, so I don't know if she's had any follow-up, but they never were responsive, so... Yeah. We, I went ahead with, and you know, I reached out to everyone that I knew from past, you know, artist work and shows and things, and the arts council, and they were very responsive. Okay, they awesome. all thought it was a good idea. So, yeah. I assume the wall that heals will have other publicity, though, like in the Darien Patch or the Darien newspaper and stuff um, like that. I have That's not, not our responsibility. I have not sent out a press release on it yet. 
because typically I find if you send out press releases too early, yeah, it gets lost in the sauce. That's why I only started hanging these today. Makes sense. Um, uh, I just sent out the press release for our Grand Marshal and our keynote speaker today so that uh, if the Darien Times is responsive, it would be in Thursday's paper this week. Yeah, they've been had a lot of turnover, so. Right. Yeah, but. Well, I assume my, Norwalk Hour or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, they, Norwalk. They yeah. I mean, Jeff, this guy, Jeff, is awesome. He's um, organized. He, he is awesome. So, uh, yeah, but in terms of the Darien, and of course, I will be mentioning it on Memorial Day. Right. And I will make sure that uh, Damian Andrews who do, and John Cini, who they're the two who do the live TV broadcast. John Cini does that? Yeah, oh. but they will have that information as well. So when they're doing the broadcast of the parade, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that I want to hand out flyers uh, at the parade organ or, uh, shape area because it just becomes litter on the ground that we yeah, have to that's pick true. up. That's so for we, sure. Because it is our responsibility to clean the lot. Are you putting them in any storefronts? Um, like I, at the Sugar Bowl, they'd be happy to post it yeah, there and places yeah. because they're right along the route. Right. That'll be a change, huh? When he leaves. When Bobby leaves? Mm. Oh, is he planning to? He's oh, yes, yeah, he announced it. Not oh, he building, has announced it. Building, but no, the, the, it's going to stay there for two years, but there's someone else taking it over, and then who knows what will oh, happen. I know he had talked about it. I didn't know he made a final decision. That's what I heard. Well, I hope they keep it as the Sugar Bowl. It's such a great place. Okay, commission staffing. So uh, I have notified the Democrat Town Committee that uh, we're looking for another applicant. Um, I say we've notified the Democrat Town Committee because uh, by charter, uh, every commission in town is supposed to be a balance between the two parties. So uh, if, if any individual is interested in serving who is a Democrat or who is an independent, okay, because independents can come in under either party's aegis. So uh, we, we do need somebody from the Democrat side of the fence to fill our current vacancy. Uh, again, my time on this commission is going to end on June 30th. So there will be a, uh, another vacancy um, uh, come July 1. So I will notify the Republican Town Committee of that and the Democrat Town Committee because, I mean, if we get two more Democrats, that's fine too. Uh, I didn't think to tell them two. Two, yeah. Yeah. But one must be a Democrat, the other one doesn't matter because it'll be a swing either way. And other than that, do we have any other new business? Carabella. You know, I had a, I had a, I just realized I had a dream two days ago about making a Carabella. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I hear a motion for Annette Carabello, which is our motion to adjourn. Seconded. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, thank you very much. We'll see you uh, on Memorial Day. Great. And we'll see you the day before the Memorial Day. That's right. And we'll see you on June 11th. <laughs> I hope so, yeah, definitely. All right, thank you.